After class ended that day, Mai said she had volleyball practice and sped off. Thankfully, this time I knew where I was going, so I headed straight back and collapsed onto my bed. Is there anything new in the journal? Dear Tyree, The normal mood skies seem like a really odd bunch, but I don't mind being around them. It's weird that I get so many stares just for sitting with them at the table, but it's kind of nice being to be getting people looking at me with interest instead of with hatred. I wonder how long I can, we can keep this up. Who knows? Also, what the shit is this tournament points things? We'll never know, I don't think. Except until we get that, to that part of the story. Thankfully, there's so many women going to the and cops in a bit. It was, nice to have, it was nice to have some time to myself. Had to tell me about it. After everything that happened, I felt like I was going crazy. I could use some relaxation. I didn't have a computer or a TV, and the book Satch gave me was really good, but sometimes got a bit hard to read. Instead, I took out my phone and started flipping through the App Store. Um, how about you get Pokemon Go and go on an adventure? Hmm. <laughs> that didn't really look good. Wait, was this... I set up. Dumby Doom's Revenge. Face off against three other players as you catch monsters, raise them, and use their unique skills to aid you on your puzzle-solving quest. Only you can save Metal World from its ignorant king and utter destruction. I guess that's kind of like Pokemon. Now with a single-player campaign, raise crops to feed your monsters. If you're lucky, they'll transform into cute girls. Mm, sounds like my kind of game, boys. What the hell? It looks so stupid, but... It couldn't hurt to give it a try. No, it could not. I downloaded it and started up the game. Welcome to da Dumby Dome's Revenge. <sighs> this is gonna be like the tournament game, isn't it? I skipped the entry sequence and quickly hit single player. Louding. The load times were terrible, am I right? Suddenly a cartoonish hilly valley met my eyes. Panning over to a white castle nestled next to a cliff. A lazy king lay asleep on a throne when a squat silver soldier ran into the room. King Dumby Doom, quickly, we're under attack! Oh, just send the first battalion off, please. I'm rather tired. The knight left and the screen faded to a world map, showing a horde of black blobs on the right side of the screen. A small group of knights ran up against the blobs and were instantly devoured. One of the black blobs spit out a helmet with a skull inside. What the hell is this game? Things continued in this way, with the king sending off his battalions haphazardly until no one was left. Then the king awoke in his chair and turned to the screen. You! Oh, me! Only you can save my kingdom, please! I don't think I can save your kingdom, asshole. You're the one menacing it. How dare you! What the hell? Did this thing hear me? You are no longer my advisor. Go back to your home village and let me deal with this myself. A tiny sprite with brown hair flew across the world map, bouncing into a bunch of red houses. I guess my only choice is to raise an army of monsters myself. Overthrow the king, then raise an army to fight the oncoming bloopity bloops. <laughs> How the hell did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> Finally, I was allowed to play the actual fucking game. A dozen multicolored blocks appeared on the screen. The monsters I was initially given could only hit their corresponding colors and couldn't activate any traps. Supposedly more monsters could eventually learn how to set traps, and you could do certain combos to hinder their opposing team. If you had an attractive girl on your team, she could use an ability to double the rate of your opponent's blocks. Wait, why? Or halve their clock time, whatever that means. But that had a drawback for you too, and could be used as an asset by the opponent. Not to mention that certain color combinations between girls and monsters activated unique secret abilities, and you could also evolve your monsters and feed them things. Oh jeez. How the heck am I supposed to remember all of this shit? Wait. Okay, now it's sunset. I failed the first few times, but quickly got the hang of it. It was just about being adaptable and maintaining a flexible strategy, after all. My eyes started to hurt, and I looked at the time. Eight o'clock? 
It's been four hours? Welcome to my life. I had reading to do. I grabbed my textbook, flipped my radio on, and began to read. There have been many tales of times when the moon has fallen on other planets, the most popular of these being the myth of Termina. However, these myths have never proven to be more than hallucination. My eyes blurred over my astronomy textbook and I yawned. The Schrubert piece floating from my radio made me want to go to sleep, and I toyed with the idea of going to class without finishing my reading. Who cared how many times the moon was supposed to fall, especially when the time when time travel was involved. Anna! My burst in through the door, flung herself across the room and grabbed my radio. Uh, hey, where have you been? What are you doing? Give me a second, we're missing it. There we go. PBG, what are you doing on the radio? <gasps> Does he have a podcast? <laughs> But I swear, that dog was the living worst. That's why you need a bird, like my lovely Jacques. Watch your tongue. What is this? Shh! So, time has come to make an official announcement. This year, just like every other year, the Norm Boots Club will be participating in the video game tournament. Woohoo! Yay! As PPG applauded as though he were a crowd of 30 people, I shot a puzzled gaze, and my. <laughs> hope you guys will su I hope you guys will support us again this year, and best of luck to our competitors. You guys are going down! And now for some music. Oh. Oh, that's it. My turn down the radio inside. Okay, what did you want? Um, what was that? P, B, and J. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. That's real good. Is that an actual thing? It's P, B, G, and John's radio show. They have a radio show? What do they do on it? Oh, you know, they talk and stuff and play music sometimes. Everyone, uh, everyone in school listens to it. I'm so glad you brought your radio. I forgot mine at home. And a video game tournament? Yeah, didn't you hear them talking about it the other day? No. Wait, that's... Yeah, they... Yeah, we did. Come to think of it, I hadn't paid much attention to their conversations. I was too busy worrying about myself, because I'm a greedy bitch. Every year they have a game tournament down in Higanabana Mall. <laughs> Lots of people come to compete, but everybody knows the real fight is between the Number Boots Club and the Hidden Block Club. Is that what they do? Video game tournaments? Yeah, that's why nobody's ever joined them since their inception. Well, I guess partly they're a group of friends who just happened to make a club together, but also, unless you're really talented, you just drag them down. Ouch. Not, uh, not all of them are so harsh, but some of them, well... I glanced away, but I felt like I knew who she was talking about. That's too bad. The conversation I had before with Jimmy and Caddy came into my mind. Had they really thought I was joining an ombuds club? There was no way. I hadn't played a video game since I was a kid. My father gave me a 4DS. F for real. <laughs> when I left home, but... A 4DS? Is that like... Come out and kill you? <laughs> The night before I left home for Asagao, my dad came to visit me in my room. I had packed a few things I owned into a briefcase and a single cardboard box set to be shipped with the train. I sat and stared at the box, somewhat bitter. I barely even needed it, I didn't own much. Oh jeez, nice mustache bro. Hello? Oh, you're looking cool! Yeah dad! My father stood in front of me, my weary smile, a weary smile on his face. Even though he tried to hide it, I could see by the deep wrinkles around his eyes and forehead that he was tired. Sad. The past few years had taken a toll on him, and I hadn't eased things. Uh, you'll be leaving tomorrow. Yeah. Heavy sounds hung between us, filling my childhood bedroom like styrofoam. Are you excited? 
Yeah. Hey, here I am. You know, then glance around my room at the pale blue walls, the broken clock above my old desk, the scuff marks around the door frame from where I ran into it as a kid. I lived in this house almost my whole life, ever since moving after kindergarten. It was everything I knew, but now it was too much for me. Just, yeah, the decision to transfer to Asaka didn't come lightly. First, it was a prestigious institution with a highly prized reputation. Only the best of the best, treating either great grades, impressive talent, or lots of money could get in. I think I hope I has a suit tooting, touting. I don't know. Oh, I was none of those things, but I made it in regardless. Part of me suspected I was a charity case. I received a small scholarship, and it would no doubt look good for the academy to have fostered a poverty-stricken child in its walls. And despite the fact that my father couldn't afford it even with the scholarship, he guaranteed he'd support me if I went. I looked again at the wrinkles in his face, and he was sagging shoulders. He pressed his hands against his body to hide the way they shook. All for me. He'd be all alone. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're going. I think this will be good for you. Yeah. I wish I could say something else, but nothing came. Well, honey, uh, just in case you get homesick, I brought a present for you. A uh, present? From his pocket, my dad produced a shining pink Nintendo 4DS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sick Nintendo. And placed it into my hands. I sure hope we get frickin' Toki Mans. What the? For you. But. Why? How? Dad, this costs so much. You're already killing yourself to let me go. What would you? Tears spilled from my eyes as my dad smiled. Nothing is too good for you, my dear Hannah. Must you game? Must you? Oop. His voice was trembling. You're my pride and joy. You deserve so much better than you've gotten from me. Dad! Go to Asago, have fun, make lots of friends, and when you get homesick, you play with that. I'll m make do. I stood up and hugged him, burying my face in his scratchy sweater and oatmeal smell. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, my little Hannah. Mm. But the thing is, he forgot to give me a cartridge to play with. That's typical dad behavior. <laughs> now I glance at the machine hidden behind my desk lamp. Why watch me carefully? Well, you never know what could happen. Why? Well, what do you mean? My giggled. Nothing, nothing at all. But I just got back, so I've got work to do. Well, great! PBG and I still had that project due, and we hadn't met to discuss it at all. He said he had it under control. But I should probably make a backup plan just in case. It wasn't that I didn't trust him, it was just that... Okay, I didn't trust him, <laughs> I was gonna say. Sighing, I worked a kink out of my shoulder. It looked like it would be a long night. Ugh, what was that noise? Stop it, please. Ugh, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm coming. Who on earth would do this so early? So early in the morning, in fact, that it wasn't even light out. I probably padded over to the door. My shift is in a bed. What? Um, what the fuck? <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? <laughs> well, it's a bit torn. Who? Oh. Oh, Who, honey? He. She pushed past me and something's in the room, flipping on the light switch. Paul and Nick followed after him. Hannah, I, I just feel terrible for ruining your uniform. Sincerely. 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 
We owe you an apology and a clean uniform. I'm not so good at that kind of thing, so I brought a friend to help me. Josh pulled open my drawer and tossed out clothes left and right. Oh my god, stop! That's my underwear! What's wrong with you? I ran to him and grabbed his arm, trying to pull him away. <sighs> what the shit is going on here? <laughs> Those panties are so cute! Oh, they're perfect for you! Get away! Get away from there! Where's your uniform? I tucked below Josh and pulled open a drawer, pulling out the sticky fabric. Here, take it! I thought it was Josh's face, but he caught it with ease. This is no problem, I'll, I'll, I'll probably solve left this great up in no time, girls. He snapped. <laughs> Follow me! Paul, Nick, and Josh swept from my room, but they didn't head towards the hall exit and said they turned left, heading deeper into the dormitory. I didn't have a good feeling about this. I stepped into my slippers and ran into the hallway just in time to see the door to the girls' bathroom and close. Oh no. Oh! What? What? What are you dumping in here? I sprinted to the bathroom door, but before I could get there, Paul and Nick slammed into the wall across the door, <laughs> across from the door. Men, men, men like that are the worst. God, at least ask before coming to hack. Whoa, no, this is all a misunderstanding. Please, I'm sure it was. Uh, no, Mimi, it really was. Oh, wait a second. Where's the other uh, person who was with him? She's doing something with a uniform in a sack. Holy shit, how could you be so fucking stupid? <laughs> Maybe tossed her hair with a sniff and headed back to the bar into the bathroom. She a she actually thinks Josh is a girl. Uh, she wouldn't be the first. Uh, Josh himself believes he's a girl. That wig is magical. Well, stay out of the girl's bathroom. It's not exactly going to help your platform if word gets around that you're a pervert. I tried to fill over Paul's face. I sighed. Don't worry, I'll go. I'll talk to Mimi. Go back to the boys' dorm. Uh, thank you so much, Hannah. Yeah, yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> I watched him scamper away, then headed into the bathroom. Hey, Joshua Lena. Hem, hem. You know what? I should probably get going. Probably should get going later. She has a fucking beard, how can you be so stupid? I ran into the corner and found them doing Mimi's hair. For God's sake. Ah. Uh, wait a second, Hannah. Oh, I've, I've just got to finish this. Hannah, have you met Joshua Lena? His saga with her, she's saga with her. And look, she even got the stain out of the shot. Mimi held up my uniform. Really? Thank goodness. Thank you so much. It's no problem, honey. I guess I'll let you finish. Uh, Mimi, you won't tell anyone about Paul and Nick coming into the bathroom, will you? Why, what did I? Well, as class representatives, they were just trying to help Josh Willian to get her bearings, and they were showing her where the bathroom was. I should have been the one to show her, but I was asleep and they didn't want to wake me up. Oh, well, it's fine. I guess it's fine, then. You really are a fucking idiot, girl. <laughs> Thank you. I stood staring at them, unsure of what to do next. Do you mind? I need to concentrate to finish this. Oh. I'm sorry. How is this like a prestigious school? <laughs> I went back to my room. Life at, Asgard, uh, life at Asgard never got easier, did it? I was still asleep when I got back, and there's no way I was going to going back to bed, so I changed my uniform, grabbed my bag, and went to class early. What the fuck? The sun's not even up. 